Hi, this is Jeff Hawkins with a short guide on creating a PLS key pair or a secure shell key. Uh, the first thing you need to do is choose a private location for your SSH keys. Uh, this is a location you'll want to have backed up, but you'll also want your backup to be secure. Uh, it's critically important that your private key not be exposed to really anyone other than yourself. Um, so pick a location for this demo. Uh, I'm going to just make it C slash demo slash SSH. Uh, but you'll want to pick something where you won't forget it, uh, where it will be secure and easily accessed for when you need uh, to use these. Okay, so let's get to it. Uh, the easiest way on Windows to create a secure shell key is to use a program called PuttyGen, which you get along with a terminal program called Putty, which by the way is one of the best for connecting to a Linux cloud server or whatever you want. So just go to Google and type Putty Download or something like that. Uh, and for some reason, it's often not the top uh, one that comes up, but it, it did come up first for me. Uh, download Putty, latest, latest release. G-I-A-R-K. If you see that, it's the right one. Uh, that link takes you to uh, a download page with 32 and 64-bit MSI installers and a bunch of other formats if you need them. Uh, download the one appropriate for your machine, install, and then we can start making a key. So go to PuTTY uh, and actually right next to it, uh, if you browse in the file system or start menu or pull it up under search, is PuttyGen. Let's do putty gen. Um, okay, so there are a lot of different types of keys. The one you want to use these days uh, is SSH2 RSA, which is the default when you fire it up. Uh, it's the first radio button. And you'll have to pick a bit length of the key. 2048 is the default and is considered secure. Uh, however, Partly that's because there is a performance uh, security trade-off going on, and 2048 is considered secure at this time. Uh, it may not be in a few years as computers become faster and uh, people become better, better able to crack these keys. So for the type of key that we're making, a personal SSH key, uh, it's better to go with something like 4096. Uh, because this key is not used repeatedly and automatically. It's used once per session when you connect to a server, etc. So the fact that it might take, you know, 500 milliseconds to de decrypt or to use is not uh, a problem. Uh, so let's go for 4096 and click Generate. Uh, notice it says uh, generate some randomness by moving the mouse over the blank area. It's using the random, or, you know, not really random, but close enough, unpredictable mouse movements to uh, provide ran randomness to the cryptographic engine behind this. Um, so the more you move your mouse, the faster it finishes. Okay, there. Now, when it's complete, you'll be offered the chance to put in a passphrase, and it is recommended that you do, again, because you don't have to type that passphrase in very often. It's just each session when you connect. So use a good password or passphrase. Use all of the rules you're used to, etc. Um, and, uh, you know, secure this key. What this does, if your key is ever stolen, if your computer is hacked, the hacker would uh, have to also find your passphrase or password in order to use the key. Without a passphrase securing it, if someone were to crack into your computer and find your keys, they could decrypt anything that was encrypted with your public key, or perhaps more importantly, they could use that key to handshake with servers you might have set up. If you're sure you can keep your key safe and you just really don't want to bother or your, your, the things you're securing are not that important, you, you certainly don't have to. It's optional, but I recommend it. Okay, done with that. So let's save the public key. Uh, and like I said, I'm just putting it in a demo slash SSH folder, but uh, you'll want to use a secure location. So um, I'm going to put in a name, you know, it'll be name, key type, 
Now you don't really have to go to this level of detail if you don't want to. The reason I'm doing this is because you may end up with more than, you know, you're going to potentially end up with more keys of different bit lengths and that sort of thing. Um, having them named so you can understand what you have, recognizing them easily when you go into Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud or something uh, is useful. Uh, name your public key as .pub and save. And then save your private key under the same name. I'm just going to click on all files so I can see it. Click it. Uh, but what you want to do is uh, make sure the, the private key is .ppk and save. And finally, some situations are going to want an open SSH key format. It's actually the same key, just in a, in a different format. So go to Conversions, Export Open SSH Key, and uh, drop one in. Uh, just take the, uh, take the extension off of it, and that will be your Open SSH Key. Save. And now you have the three keys you will need at an extremely secure uh, bit length. Uh, and a password or passphrase uh, to be used with cloud services taking advantage of free web servers and, and various other things you can do.